Good evening, I'm Greg Sharp, our sports ticker, brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Husker football had today off the Big Red, did hold a scrimmage on Saturday, and afterwards head coach Matt Rural had this to say about the play of his team. It was, it was significantly improved by the defense. Uh, disappointed, um, we put the ball on the ground too much offensively and special teams wise. Um, as you install sometimes and put new plays in, guys start to focus on the plays and not the details and the fundamentals, which is kind of my job. Really happy to get out there and scrimmage in that weather. And I told the guys on offense, you know, they're in white. I said, hey, you guys, in your mind, uh, you're at, at Michigan State late in the year and it's cold on defense. I told the guys, like, hey, you're playing Iowa at home day after Thanksgiving. So, you know, I'm always trying to cast a vision for, you know, everyone kept asking me if we're going to go inside, we're going to go inside. I said, well, lightning hits, but other than that, we're going to be outside. That's where we play. So um, I was really happy with their demeanor, the way they attacked it, but just didn't love the fact that the offense put the ball on the ground uh, too many times. You know, a couple times the quarterbacks, a couple times the running backs. Happy that the defense knocked the ball out, though. Huskers will be back on the practice field tomorrow as they get ready for Saturday's red-white scrimmage. Over 58,000 tickets have been sold. We will begin our broadcast Saturday with a pregame at 11 a.m. Husker Athletics unveiled a modernized version of Herbie Husker which is one of the most iconic mascots in college sports. The logo was pushed out today on social media, and the new costume will be unveiled Saturday at the spring game. The new mark features a blonde Herbie, overalls, and an ear of corn in his pocket. Amy Williams has filled the vacancy on her staff. She announced this afternoon Julian Asibe, who's been an assistant at Florida, will take over for Tom Gailey, who announced his retirement from coaching last week. Husker softball had themselves quite a weekend. The Big Red swept a series at Indiana, and today the league recognized Brooke Andrews as the conference player of the week. The junior outfielder hit 602 home runs, or two doubles, and one home run. Huskers back in action this Wednesday night, hosting Creighton at 6. We'll have the broadcast for you right here on the Huskers radio network. NBA playoffs continue tonight. Pair of game twos, Brooklyn and Philadelphia. The 76ers won the opener. Later tonight, it's Golden State at Sacramento. The Kings captured game one on Saturday. One afternoon game of the bigs. The Angels beat the Red Sox on Patriot Day at Fenway 5-4. to four. The 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Oscar student athletes? Your name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for a full night of Sports Highly coming up here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here's the 3 2 to Swanson. Gabe swings and drills one in the air to center. Backing up his Kaplan. He's to the track. He's to the wall. It is gone. It's a three run shot for Swanson. His second homer of the day. Ralston again delivers 1 2. And Andrew swings and blasts it. Deep left center field and gone home run brooke andrews and nebraska takes the lead in the sixth here is your host greg sharp on the huskers radio network thank you welcome to another night of sports only jessica has a couple of days off here so you're stuck with me tonight we got a good show for you though jeremiah Searle's going to join us here in just a little bit give us his thoughts about spring football and the upcoming game coming up on Saturday, mentioned in the ticker, about 58,000 tickets have been sold for the game. One o'clock on Saturday. I wish the forecast was a little bit better right now. I'm looking at upper 40s, pretty windy day. I think we'll have some sunshine, so that should help. But where's Mother Nature? Where's spring setting in here? It's gorgeous here today. Man, over the weekend, though, it was... We had the rain issues Saturday for the Husker baseball game. Had to wait almost two hours to get that game going. And then yesterday played in 40-mile-per-hour wind gusts. It was just a, a gale storm going out there. So probably windy. Better bring a jacket to the game on Saturday. Tickets still available, though. Remember, they go up in price on game day. So if you're coming, you want to order them ahead. You don't want to pay double because they basically double in price day a game. So don't do that if you're going to come. Get arrangements, get online, get them bought between now and Saturday morning. So looking forward to that. Huskers have two more practices before the game. They'll practice tomorrow. They'll practice Thursday. Uh, we'll, we'll have a full practice report for you on Thursday's program. Tomorrow night we have, we have baseball Huskers hosting the Creighton Blue Jays tomorrow night. But we'll have a full practice report for you on Thursday night. You heard, heard the coach in the ticker. He thought that the offense put the ball on the ground a little bit too much in their 
second big scrimmage of the year on Saturday. Uh, again, the, for a coach, you're caught in between on those things because you've got – you like the fact that your defense is forcing turnovers. You don't like the fact that your offense is committing turnovers. So it's a catch-22 for Matt Rural and the coaching staffs. Uh, but – uh, you know, you, you do like to the, the hear that the, the, the defense is forcing some turnovers. That's been something that's been missing a little bit um, with Oscar football the last couple of years is the lack of forcing turnovers. I mean, we did it in the Iowa game. Look what happened. We won the game. You forced four Hawkeye turnovers in that game, and lo and behold, the Oscars get a big road win. So certainly a big part of it. And you heard Coach World talking about uh, that, that's certainly a point of emphasis for both sides of the ball is you can't turn it over on offense, and you got to get a few on the defensive side of the ball. So always fun to hear him recap uh, the scrimmage. He went on to say in his press conference after the scrimmage Saturday that they said the quarterback ripped off a couple of big runs. Uh, that's encouraging to see. Jeff Sims is a really good athlete. And, and I don't know if Jeff Sims will be the starter next fall. That, that won't be announced here this week or next. It won't be announced probably until mid toward late August who wins the quarterback spot. But Jeff Sims certainly has a leg up because he's been there all spring. He's been able to work it, been able to learn about it, get all those type of things. So I think he's got a leg up. Casey Thompson hasn't been able to practice because of a shoulder uh, surgery that he had in the offseason. He's been out there every day. He's absorbing what they're uh, learning and all that. But if you're not out there running it, you're, you're, you're behind a little bit. It's plain and simple. So uh, good to hear that the quarterbacks did have a couple big runs uh, in, the, in the scrimmage on Saturday. So we're pedaling toward it, 11 o'clock for pregame coverage. Damon will be here with me on Saturday morning. We'll break down a lot of things on our pregame cut. Saturday should be a lot of fun. I mean, this should be a lot of fun. You've got Frank Solich coming back. Um, they're going to honor him at halftime. Um, I, I, I know it's going to be a warm, warm round of applause for Coach Solich to come back and feel the love of Husker Nation. I mean, Frank Solich, through his playing days at UNL in the 60s, to the longtime assistant coach under Coach Osborne, uh, primarily the running backs coach, to then being the head coach for the Cornhuskers. Um, he, he just has meant an awful lot. You think about this, that we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the stadium this year. So Memorial Stadium, built in 1923. This is 2023. Frank Solich was a, essentially part of Husker football for about 40% of that time, from being a player to an assistant coach to the head coach. So he was a part of about 40% of games that have been played at Memorial Stadium. So, by golly, he, he, he should be honored, and I'm glad he has allowed people to come back and uh, honor him and tip their cap to him and clap for him and do all those things and kind of a virtual put your arms around him and give him a big hug. So I'm looking forward to that. Now you get the announcement today, we're going to see the brand-new Herbie coming up today. So what, what do you think of that, folks? What do you think of uh, the new Herbie logos that were put out today? Going back to Blonde Herbie, uh, the corn cob in the, in the pockets. You've got, uh, you know, the, the overalls on there. I, this is, you know, last week we were talking about, do you want to change the tunnel walk? And now all of a sudden here, boom, the new Herbie. Uh, we've seen renderings of it. It went out today, what the kind of the, for each uh, decal will look like for each sport at Nebraska. And then we'll see it in person uh, at the spring game on Saturday. So there's a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff Saturday with, between the Coach Solich and, and the new Herbie uh, coming out from underneath the bowels of Memorial Stadium. That's going to be a really, really cool and fun thing for, for everybody to see and witness on, uh, on Saturday. So I'd love your thoughts. If you've got some thoughts about the new blonde Herbie, love to uh, have you fire off those on a text at 402-413-2400. You can, or you can fire up the phones and, and give us a call that day as, or that this day as well. Will Bolt will be here in hour two. We'll have our weekly baseball chat with the head coach. Huskers coming off of a, of a sweep over Northwestern. And, and honestly, that it should have been a sweep. Nebraska's clearly better than the Cats. First year coach at Northwestern. They're having their issues. They just do not have much pitching. And, and it was neither, none of the three games were really that competitive. I guess game one kind of was through four or five innings, but then Nebraska got on top of them and, and put them away with some, some easy wins uh, over the Wildcats. And now, now you get Creighton coming to town tomorrow night, and those in-state schools have been a bugaboo for the Huskers. And let's see if they can turn that trend around starting tomorrow. And then a really big series for the Huskers uh, coming up this weekend as they go to Iowa to take on the Hawkeyes. 
Uh, Iowa is kind of middle of the pack in the league standings right now. Nebraska is actually in first place. I mean, by percentage points, they've got a just a few percentage points edge on Indiana. Indiana is nine and three in the league. The Huskers are seven and two. But yeah, here you are. You're nine games through the 24 game schedule, and you're in first place. So there's still a lot that this team can play for. They've had some disappointing losses. I get that. The team knows that. But you can't do anything about them now. You got to move forward and. And I thought the team did that this weekend. Swung the bats extremely well. Set a Haymarket Park record yesterday for home runs in a game with seven of them. Nebraska now has three players with Gabe Swanson joining Bryce Matthews and Max Anderson, double digits in home runs. And this is a fun team to watch. I mean, they are they can get on top of a opposing pitching staff and just get after it and and uh, hit and launch balls over the ballpark and. Uh, so if you liked offense, you probably really enjoyed the games over the weekend against Northwestern, and they hope to continue that trend tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's game is a 7 o'clock start. Uh, it's been adjusted for television purposes. So um, if you've got tickets, plan accordingly. Not at the normal 6 o'clock start for Husker home baseball games, but 7 tomorrow night. We'll have a full hour pregame for you tomorrow night uh, before the Creighton game. And then softball, what a weekend for Ronda Ravel's team. Do want to tip our cap to them. They went on the road to Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana was, when the weekend began, second in the league in the standings behind Northwestern. Everybody chasing Northwestern in softball right now. And the Huskers go sweep them. Took all three games on the road. So great weekend for the Husker softball team. Now, they're home all week. They've got Creighton coming to, to Bowling Stadium on Wednesday night. And then they'll Welcome the Badgers of Wisconsin for a three-game series over the weekend at Bullen Stadium. So baseball out of town after tomorrow. Softball will be here for the weekend. So encourage you to get out and support Husker softball. They're currently in second place in the league. So you've got you got the baseball team in first. You got softball team in second. So some pretty good things happening. The ball diamond sports for the Huskers as we hit uh, the late stages of April uh, now for uh, both baseball and softball. So. Creighton for the softball team Wednesday night. Wisconsin over the weekend out of Bowling. Baseball's got Creighton tomorrow night at home, and then they go to Iowa City to take on the Hawkeyes for a three-game series. But good, good, good weekend. Oscar Bowling, we talked about that last week. We heard Jessica talk to their All-American last week. They ended up finishing third in the national championship, finished behind Arkansas State and Vanderbilt. Men's gym competed in the national championships. They finished fifth. So congratulations to Chuck Schmelka and uh, their, their season. I know they're probably sli- both, both bowling and men's gym probably slightly disappointed in finishing third for bowling, fifth for men's gym, but still a really good accomplishment, really good uh, seasons for both of those. So those now are completed and in the books. All right, 402 413 2400, the number if you want to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Bill in Portland says, Greg, do you think college baseball will adopt the uh, Major League Baseball pitch clock? Well, Bill, they do have the pitch clock in college baseball. They do have it this year. It's not quite as stringent a rules. The timing's a little different. It's 20 seconds between pitches for college, where I think Major League Baseball is 15 with no batters on base. But they have done it in college baseball this year, and I think it's been a very, very good addition to the game. We've seen a major drop in game times for college baseball with the addition of the pitch clock. So, um, yeah, I think it's been a welcome change to college baseball. I know a lot of traditionals hate the fact that now you have a sport with another clock involved, but I think it kind of needed it. I think baseball needed a little modernization, and I think the pitch clock has done that. So, Bill, yep, pitch clock being used right now in in college baseball. Let's head to the phones. Our old friend Skunk Man joining the program tonight. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? Are you out in the field yet? Uh, actually, I am. I'm sitting in the tractor, idling it right now, so I could hear you better. Good. Are you just? Are you not? You're not planting yet, are you? You're just get. You just getting it already? Yeah. Just we're. Well, I'm, I'm dusting right now, but yeah. uh, I'm doing. I'm doing a rain dance every night, but it ain't doing any good. Ooh, boy, we could use some rain, couldn't we? Yes, we could. I uh, just want to let you know uh, the the Skunk family will be in Lincoln this weekend. Uh, really fired up for the spring game, uh, drinking all the Husker Kool Aid. And uh, the only thing that would make it perfect, it's too bad baseball is playing in Iowa this weekend. Yeah, it'd be nice to have them at home. You got softball at home, but baseball is on the road. I know people love that skunk man when they come to town. They can see both. But yeah, it just didn't work out this year. What do you think of the new Herbie? Do you see pictures today? Uh, 
a- any Herbie is good. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, it's he's he's cool. It's it's old school. Old school is good. Very good. Well, hey, good luck. Get that heart. Get that uh, planting done in the next few weeks, and uh, hopefully, we can keep you entertained. Have fun Saturday. You bet. Uh, and, and again, it's going to be. We're going to have a fun time. Good stuff. Bring some warm weather Saturday. It's supposed to be a little chilly. Thanks, man. Good to hear from you. Uh, our, one of our great fans out there in Albion uh, calling in tonight. Shane in Alliance on our text line said, I like the new Herbie. Looks like the way he should. Glad they brought him back. So I think, Shane, I think your opinion is, I think that's the prevailing opinion I've seen today. I think people are really glad that uh, they've got the blonde Herbie uh, back and going again. I think Brandon Brandon's sending me pictures of uh, – is that you, Brandon, on the text? You, yeah, you kind of look a little similar to the, the blonde Herbie that's now back as well. So, yeah, good stuff there. Yeah, that was a big, you know, Trev, Trev Alberts on his monthly radio shows. And by the way, his next one's this Thursday. So put that in your calendars. Thursday, this hour, the first hour of the program, Trev will be here for an entire hour. But he's talked about they were working on the redesign of a new Herbie to get him ready uh, for everybody to see. So, um, We'll get into some other topics with Trev on, on Thursday night as well. But I think the prevailing feeling today when all the logos hit social media is a thumbs up from everybody to go back to the blonde Her- Herbie uh, moving forward. All right, I need to step aside, get a break in. Our Sports Highway Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with what else? When we come back, oh boy, Jeremiah going to join us. Talk some spring football. That's coming up next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Your story, it lives in the capital city, where we take Nebraska nice to another level, and we always show up for Go Big Red. In your story, a pioneering spirit has built a community that cares. Your story is the story of Lincoln, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's breaking news from the Capitol or sending you to the best shows in town. And here in the Lincoln Journal Star is where it comes to life. Lincoln Journal Star, where your story lives. Baseball season has arrived and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. 
hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Save time and shop online with Woodhouse. Easily discover your next vehicle while shopping for a new or new to you car, truck, or SUV. Woodhouse has something for everyone, offering 19 of the top name brands in new and an extensive pre-owned inventory. You're guaranteed to find that spacious, family-friendly SUV or that get-any-job-done truck. So get started today at Woodhouse.com. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center. It is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. What a treat for us tonight to be joined by Jeremiah Searles, former Husker, and uh, kind enough to give us a few minutes of his time as we are on spring game week. It's kind of a fun time of year. How are you doing, my friend? And congratulations to you and your wife on a new addition to your family. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I'm doing great. You know, just figuring life out with three kiddos as we go. Um, you know, just keeping the two youngest ones from just loving that little baby so much that they kill it. So just monitoring the gremlins and that. But it was fun. It's spring game week. Football's kind of back in the air a little bit. And, man, couldn't be more excited for the spring game on Saturday. Did you like zone blocking when you were a player? Because you're, now, you're having to play zone now with you and your wife. Oh, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, there's always holes in the zone. That's the problem. <laughs> Once you switch from man to man, there's always holes in the zone. Yeah. Well, b before we, we get into kind of some meaty stuff about Husker football, I do want to pass along my condolences to you on, on the loss of yet another, tragically, another teammate of yours in Cole Penzik. I know you were at the services, were a pallbearer last week. Uh, just tragic times, and, and our, our hearts went out to the entire Penzik family, but... Uh, I know he was close to you, and you guys were good buds, so our heartfelt condolences to you. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah, it, it was a tough week. Um, you know, anytime you hear of a death of a teammate, it just it's, it's heart-wrenching. But to have three teammates that I played with 
at Nebraska, all pass away in car crashes. Just, man, I, I'm, I'm tired of going to funerals, and it's sad. And, yeah, we a lot of love for Dan and Bev and Abby. I'm um, going to chance to see them, and uh, the turnout was phenomenal. A lot of Husker brothers came to show support for them and to be there for Cole's funeral, and uh, just a tough deal all around, and just – We'll just continue to wrap our arms around that family. How will you remember Cole, Jeremiah? What, 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 do you, what comes to mind when you think of Cole Penzig? The ultimate Nebraskan. I mean, I, I, can't even, I can't even put in words how much Nebraska was and meant to him. I mean, not only because his dad played there, not only because he played there, but just because he loved not just the state, but the Cornhuskers so much. I mean, he was a true glue guy for us as players that showed us what it meant to be a Nebraskan, showed us what it meant to wear the N on the side of our helmets, and really just a great friend of mine, too. We chased elk together in the mountains. We killed deer together. We hunted together. We went on spring break to Las Vegas together. I mean, he's one of my, he was one of my close friends, um, and I'll just, I'm going to miss him for forever. I heard Coach Polini was back. Did you get a chance to talk to your old coach? I did. It was great to see Coach Bo, even though the circumstances weren't awesome, um, you know, but it was just good to catch up with him and see him and hear about all the golf and <laughs> running with his dogs that he does now and just get a chance to catch up with him and just, man, I, I love that guy so much. And just the fact that he showed up, uh, he was there and Vince Pellini was there as well. Mark's, uh, Mark's father showed up as well for support. So again, it just goes to show you that, I mean, when you play at Nebraska, whether you coached or played here, it's not just you leave and you're done. It's a true brotherhood from the top down, and we're always going to be there to support each other through the good times and the bad. Busy with Jeremiah Searles here on Sports Island on the Huskers Radio Network. Okay, let, let's switch and talk about spring practice, this year's edition of the Husker football team. I know you've been to a couple of practices. What strikes you about the makeup and the style that this coaching staff is employing here? What, what strikes you as you've watched those workouts? You know, the number one thing I love is the way that Coach Rule runs his practices. They're very professional run. There's periods, he's on the horn, he stays on time. There's structure to it. You know, that's really important. Um, we talked about it on the podcast with Jessica. You know, there's a, there's a key to success of how you win football games. And this goes back to Mike Zimmer when I was with the Vikings. He goes, first you have to learn how to practice. Once you learn how to practice, you learn how to win. Once you learn how to win, you learn how to handle winning. Once you learn how to handle winning, you learn how to become a champion. And this team very much so right now is in the learning how to practice phase under what Coach Rule his wants and expects. So seeing how he runs and the standards that he holds for each player in each period I think is fantastic. He's not afraid to stop practice and get after people, but he's also right in the middle of it coaching everyone up. I just love the way his practices are run from, um, from that standpoint. And then you can just see that everyone's working really hard. Everyone is trying to give their best. Everyone's trying to put their best foot forward and that's what you need to have in spring ball you're laying a foundation for when you head into training camp that's built in the spring and so they've done a great job of it now and we'll get to see a little sneak peek we're not going to get to see much as most spring games are but I think we'll get to see a little sneak peek of what game readiness will look like on Saturday you played here you played in the NFL are there differences between the way you practiced as a collegiate to the NFL and do you see some of those tweaks that coach rural because now he's coached in the nfl with carolina do you see elements of nfl practices what he's doing here i see the way that it's structured the structure of the practice is very nfl geared now the main difference between nfl and college is the physicality obviously um in college it's extremely important that you be way more physical than you are in the nfl when you're in the nfl physically you can do it, right? If you weren't, then you're going to get cut. But in college, it's about learning how to callous your body the right way, how to treat your body when you're not practicing from those hard practices and recovering and how to do all those things. And so Coach Rule is going to implement, hey, we're going to practice really hard, but I think he's also got great recovery strategies. I think the weight room's going to have a great job, the nutrition, everything from that aspect. But just how he runs his practices is very NFL-oriented, which is structure and which is having a plan. And, you know, when you have those two things, that then falls into everything else inside the building. You know, if practice is structured, then meetings are structured. If meetings are structured, then the schedule is structured all the way from football to academics to the class. And when you just have structure like that built into the program, you're just preparing young men for what life outside of, NFL, or outside of college, whether it's the NFL or just the job market, is supposed to be. And that's one thing that he's talked about a lot is he's not just here to be a, a head football coach. He's here to prepare men for life after football, too. Jeremiah, that he's made the quarterbacks live at some of the scrimmages. I'm, we're anticipating that they're going to be live, which means they could be hit 
in the game Saturday. You good with that? You okay with that? Makes me nervous. It, it makes me nervous. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that it's important. And it, I think if you're going to do it, spring's the right time because, I mean, I'm going to knock on every piece of wood I have in this office. You know, if for some reason injury happens, there's time before training camp. But also it's it's important because a lot of quarterbacks are not used to getting hit. And then all of a sudden you run out there September and you haven't been hit and you take that first sack or that first hit and you're not ball security conscious. You're not used to being in the pocket and having to keep the ball where it needs to be so it doesn't get stripped out of your hands. You know, those all play a factor into turnovers. It plays a factor of after you get hit a few times, how are you still throwing the ball, right? If you're in a live situation and you're getting hit two or three, four times on running the ball or you get hit in the pocket, it's going to affect how you're throwing it. So I like it from that aspect. The the inside me gets a little nervous anytime you see a green jersey running and it's going to get hit. Um, that's also the O-lineman me hating watching quarterbacks get hit. But at the same time, it puts a little more pressure on you as an offensive lineman, as a tight end, as a running back. If you're protecting that quarterback and he's live, you don't want to be the reason he's on the ground. You know, it's, you can get a little false sense of security as an offensive lineman in practice where you get beat, he runs by, and he taps the quarterback on the butt, and you're like, ah, shoot, can't do that again. But when you get beat and he's putting your, you're picking your quarterback up off the ground going, sorry, there puts a little more, uh, little more pep in your step in those pass protections. No doubt. We're back into another portal period. It opened over the weekend, and really there was just very little news as, as that relates to the Huskers. There might be more next week after the, the spring game and the spring practices conclude. As you looked at this team during through a couple of practice sessions, do you think there's a need that coaches may want to go attack? I remember last spring, Huskers felt like they needed some more bodies on the defensive line. They went out and they got O'Shawn Mathis and Devin Drew from Texas Tech and Wynn from Alabama. Is defensive line still maybe an area they might look at in May when the, with the portal being open? I think so. You know, especially when you play in a division as tough as the Big Ten where you're just going to get the ball ran at you and it's going to be cold weather games and winning in the trenches, right? You have to have not just good players, you have to have depth. You know, it's really hard to ask Ty Robinson to play 90 snaps a game and ask him to be at his absolute best for all 90. If you can have Ty Robinson be a 45 to 50 snap a game guy, but his production is so much higher because he can get a few breathers here and there, that's great. You also just need guys that can disrupt. You know, if you only have one guy, Ty Robinson being the guy I'm going to focus on, who I think is primed for a massive year, if he's your only disruptor, then they can game plan him, right? I think we need some more disruptors up front, and we need some big bodies up front that can handle the double teams of the Wisconsins and the Michigans and, and really be able to stand in there to let our linebackers run and be free in this 3-3-5 and be able to run all over the place you got to have some big bodies up front that can eat those things. So I think D-line's a big need there um, in that respect. All right, that's an area that maybe there's a need as you've watched and observed some practices. Are there some areas that you like the depth on this football team, either side of the ball or both sides of the ball? I like running backs right now. I like I like where our running back room is at right now. I think we have a good stable of guys back there between Grant and Gabe Irvin and A.J. Allen and, you know, guys that just popped at times last year. Ramir Johnson's another one. Um, you know, just guys that you have to continually look at and watch and go, okay, I'm ready for one of you to take the step and be like, this is my room now. Like, no more competition. Like, the next step for that room is to have a lead dog. And you saw times of it last year with Anthony Grant. I think Gabe Irvin's primed for it. I mean, he's flashed a lot at the scrimmage this past week. But I love what that room is and the capability of what that room can be moving into the fall. You know, every staff comes in, changes usually the strength and conditioning part of it. No difference here with Coach Rural. He's changed that as well. Any early impressions of do they do they lean a certain way with what they're trying to build up their alignment like, or is it too early to tell what, what their strategy is with that? It's a little early to tell, but I, I will say guys like Bryce Benhart, Turner Corcoran, and, and those guys that I've seen for a few years now look a little slimmer. You know, right. I think that they are a little slimmer. Um, that doesn't mean that they're by don't take that as they're less strong because you can absolutely yeah. lose fat and gain muscle. You know, I think that they just look a little bit more trim, which I think makes me think that they're going to do a little bit more running and gunning in this offense, running guys side to side, the outside zone, the inside zone, the pin pulls, getting guys moving in a bunch of directions. You have to have athletic linemen that can run. Um, and if you're 330, 325, that can be tough sometimes. Right. You know, if you're in that 310 to 315 range, that's where you need to be. I and mean, if you really look at what the NFL's gone to, I mean, you have the unicorns out there of the Daniel Falahis and the Orlando Browns that are enormous, massive humans. But really, you're seeing guys between that 300 and 315 mark kind of be the norm because they can move and they can run. And then you got to keep up with these edge rushers that are running four three nines off the edge like that crazy person from Georgia. No doubt. 
All right. Uh, do we put too much into the into Saturday? I mean, is there a lot of evaluation? What, what do you think you take? What do the coaches take from from a spring game uh, coming up that we'll all be be watching here in five days? You know, there's two perspectives from it. One, there's the fan perspective, which is I wouldn't expect us to see what we would call a polished product and what we're expecting to see in the fall. You know, because we're not going to, A, show everyone everything for the spring game. There were going to be people watching this game that would be breaking it down for our week one opponent. You know, but from a, from a fan perspective, you just kind of want to see, A, who's going to rise, who's going to fall, who's kind of the new shiny object. But from a coach's standpoint, it's completely different. From a coach's standpoint, you're looking at this as like, okay, when there's a thousand or ten thousand or now that there's gonna be eighty thousand eyes on these guys, who folds and who is can who can handle that pressure? Right? Guys that didn't get a lot of playing time last year, who have never been a starter, right? But it's be their first time with an environment that's gonna be game day like. You wanna make sure guys aren't changing. You wanna make sure guys aren't going outside of their box and they're doing something that's like, whoa, I haven't seen you do that for 14 practices. Who are you? Why are you doing this? Or some guys that may rise to that occasion. You know, this is an evaluator for these coaches of who can we trust when, when the, I mean, it's all the marbles, right? Everything's out there. Can we trust you to go out there and perform in our scheme? Can we trust you to go out there and perform within your abilities and all those things? So it's a huge evaluator for the coaches just on that aspect of just who's going to fold and who's going to really rise to the top. Were you nervous for your first spring game here? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I got to. I didn't play at all as a redshirt player, but like that was my first time starting in front of Memorial Stadium. A lot of nerves, you know, a lot of nerves, a lot of anxiousness, a lot too. But once you get out there, you kind of realize, okay, it's still just ball. It's still just ball. There's a lot more eyes watching. It's really your first experience of that, which is good for some of these guys that we're going to be leaning on in the fall for meaningful minutes. That this kind of gives them a dress rehearsal before week one. Very good. Jeremiah, great to catch up. Again, congratulations on the new edition. Hope you're getting some sleep. We'll look forward to seeing you at the game on Saturday. Absolutely, guys. Looking forward to seeing everyone again in that sea of red as always. Go Big Red. There he is, Jeremiah Searles, with us here on Sports Sunday. Folks, buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back with more of the show next. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm sports media student Connor Clark with Campus News. More than $145 million in gross revenue has been generated by startup companies founded by alumni of UNL's Angler Agribusiness Entrepreneurship Program since the program began in 2010. With over 230 Angler Program alumni growing businesses across Nebraska, the Angler Program is making a big impact on the lives of students, alumni, and Nebraskans. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. 
That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling. His favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota. The number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp with you here tonight. Jessica's got a couple of days off. We'll have head baseball coach Will Bolt with us at the top of the hour for his weekly baseball show. So get your comments, questions ready for that hour. Huskers coming off the sweep over Northwestern. And in first place in the league, it's 7-2. and two, Just percentage points ahead of Indiana, who is and 9-3. They've had one more weekend of Big Ten play. Uh, Crypto King in our YouTube chat room wanted to know uh, the spring game attendances. How is Nebraska going to compare to other teams in college football? Well, I pulled this up for you, Crypto. Ohio State had their spring game Saturday. They had 75,000. That's the highest one I've been able to find. Penn State had 68. I think that's, I think that's in range for Nebraska. We've we've sold 58,000 tickets right now. So you know if the yeah, and the weather didn't look great, but I think we'll get close to 68,000. Tennessee had 58,000, so we're right there already with our ticket sales. Georgia, the defending national champs, 54,000. South Carolina had 51. Clemson had 50. That's from this past weekend. I you know I'm, I'm not sure if we've had. 
Uh, anybody before this past weekend that would have had more than that? I kind of doubt. Well, the week before that would have been Easter weekend, so I doubt there were any spring games then. There'll probably be a handful more this weekend that may approach that. But the Buckeyes have the highest one that I found. That is at uh, 75,000. Carla on our text line said, kind of another attendance type question. Do you know how the current Nebraska baseball home game attendance compares to the rest of the Big Ten? Carla, we blow them all away. Nobody comes close to having the crowds that the Huskers do for baseball. I, I mean, nobody comes close. Uh, we had, Michigan had pretty good crowds. They were probably in the 1,500 range. So uh, it, Nebraska blows everybody in the, the league out and with attendance at baseball. Nationally, we're, we're usually in that 10 to 20 range. Nationally in attendance, we're not in the top. We're, we're, we don't really usually get in the top 10, but we're 12, 15, somewhere in there. Like this past weekend, Mississippi and Mississippi State, big in-state rivalry, I think they had 40,000 for their three-game series. So um, we're, we're up there, but we're not quite in the, to the top uh, top 10 in the country uh, for baseball attendance. But Big Ten-wise, oh, yeah, we blow everybody out of the water for that. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate the text. Uh, keep them coming uh, from everybody else. Jim in Columbus said, hey, I'm getting excited uh, for about the spring game. So many good things going on with Frank Solich coming back and bringing back closer to the old mascot. I'm just going to let the coaches do their thing and enjoy the day on Saturday. Go Big Red. I I'm with you, Jim. Again, this is one. It's just going to be exciting if you come to the game to see your friends who maybe you sit with during the regular season. Be outside. Be inside this great stadium. Soak it in. And don't put too much into the game. You're going to walk away. How many years do you walk away and go, whew, so-and-so is going to be a star. And then we get to the fall and you're like, who was that guy that really had a great spring game? We don't even see him play anymore. But So keep it in mind. Keep that in perspective when you see uh, the game Saturday. But uh, sometimes there are big stars that come out of the spring game, and they do project, project into being a big-time player for you in the fall. But it's just going to be great to be back here. Uh, Saturday and can't wait to see a lot of red in the stands for this game. First Interstate Bank, folks, it's built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com, member FDIC. Need to work in our final break of the hour, 402-413-2400. Still time if you want to call us up and chit-chat, fire off a text. We'll answer some of those. All that coming up next. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890Nebraska.com. Find your next SUV at Woodhouse Mazda today. Visit one of our two locations in Millard off 144th and Giles Road or in Bellevue off Highway 75. And find your next Mazda SUV like the 2023 Mazda CX-50. Plus right now you can get 0.9% APR for 36 months on all new 2023 Mazda SUV models. With approved credit, tax title license extra. Excludes Mazda 3 and Mazda 3 hatchback. Offer expires 4-30-2023. See dealer for details. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe. 
Think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, T-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker baseball in action tomorrow night against the Creighton Blue Jays, 7 o'clock. For first pitch, we'll be on the air with pregame at 6. Husker softball also playing the Blue Jays this week. They've got a Wednesday game at Boland Stadium. That will be at 6 o'clock. Nate Rohr will be on the air with pregame at 545. Then Husker football will have their spring game on Saturday, 1 o'clock. At Memorial Stadium, we'll be on the air with pregame at 11. So two-hour pregame coming your way on Saturday for Husker football. That is what is on tap, presented by Bud Light. 402-413-2400. Last segment we were talking about attendance. Carl, I want to know how, about where Nebraska baseball ranks in the Big Ten for baseball attendance. And then Art in Los Angeles said he went and saw the Huskers play when they were out in San Diego, and he goes, we had more Husker fans at that game than the Toreros did. I think you're right, Art. It was pretty close. It was about a 50-50 split. I know we have a big alumni base out there in Southern California. And so if we, everywhere we go, we'll see some Husker fans pop up for all of our sports, and baseball is no different. Husker fans come out and uh, jump into that as well. So keep those uh, texts coming in here tonight. Those come in on our Sports Sunday hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from uh, one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. No show tomorrow, baseball. No show Wednesday. We're going to carry some Husker softball back with you on Thursday. And we'll have Trev in here for hour one. It's his monthly athletic director show. And so a lot to talk about, obviously, with Frank Solich coming back for the game on on a Saturday and also the unveiling of the new Herbie that came out earlier today. So we'll hear about that. Uh, maybe get some updates on the big volleyball match that's going to be inside of Memorial Stadium next year with the Mavericks coming to face the Huskers and also Carney UNK playing Wayne State. So maybe we'll have some more details with that and just lots of things with Trev coming up on Thursday night. We'll also Thursday show have, a, have the final practice report for the spring. Huskers will have their final pre-spring game workout on Thursday. So we'll recap that for you on the program on Thursday night. So that's uh, our week ahead. And then no, no show again on Friday. Husker baseball will be over in Iowa City to take on the Hawkeyes. That game will be at 6 o'clock on Friday night. So a busy week of sports with baseball, softball, and then the spring game on Saturday. So we'll be busy here on the network for the next couple of days. That's hour one. Thanks to Jeremiah Searles for stopping by and giving us his insights and thoughts about Husker football after he witnessed a couple of the workouts for the guys the last couple of weeks. Coming up next hour, our head baseball coach, Will Bolts here. It's our weekly baseball chat. We'll talk Husker baseball. The Big Red coming off of the sweep over the weekend against the Northwestern Wildcats, set to host Creighton tomorrow, and then over to Iowa City to play the Hawkeyes' key league series coming up next weekend. Come on back. Get your comments, questions ready for the head coach. We'll do that next. up on the text line text 402-413-2400 with your husker thoughts hello tomorrow we may not know exactly what you've got in store for us for our routines and our normals but here's the thing turns out we've got this we haven't seen everything but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be so when it comes to tomorrow Bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. 
the rebellious 15-year loan, the here for laundry 20-year loan, and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe healthcare should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cenex has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex.
This is the Husker Baseball Show on the Huskers Radio Network with head coach Will Bolt. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. First pitch to Josh. Breaking ball hammered to left. That is absolutely crushed. Way out of here over the hitting facility in left field. Udagawa's 0-1 pitch. Matthew swings and hits one hard in the air to left. Is it high enough? You bet it is. It's a homer for Matthews. Solo shot into left, and it's 7-3 Nebraska. The 0-2 from Perry. Swing and a miss. Kyle Perry has faced three and struck out three. So the fifth-year senior dealing. One and one to Calarco. The pitch. Hot shot in third. Nice pick by Carey to second for one. On to first. In time. Double play. Slick. Fielding play by Dylan Carey at third base. Here's the 3 2 to Swanson. Gabe swings and drills one in the air to center. Backing up his Kaplan. He's to the track. He's to the wall. It is gone. It's a three run shot for Swanson. His second homer of the day. And Nebraska's lead swells yet again to 18 to 1. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome to our weekly sit-down with the head coach of the Cornhuskers, Will Bolt. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. That's the number to dot us up with a comment or question. If you want to fire off a text, you can communicate with us that way as well. We're also up on our YouTube stream. You can uh, dive in there and chat with the folks, fellow Husker fans in there that are having some fun tonight. Huskers had some fun over the weekend. Congratulations, three-game sweep. Can't ever assume a sweep in conference play, but you guys got her done. Yeah, no, it was a great weekend, and uh, Northwestern came in just a game behind us in the standings at 3-3. Three and three. So, um, yeah, just a, a little bit of an odd weekend with great weather on Friday and then, you know, terrible weather Saturday and kind of having to wait out a, a rain delay. And then, obviously, it was a little bit chilly and crazy amounts of wind on Sunday. So uh, three totally different days, but proud of the focus our guys showed and, and – uh, just yeah, just a great weekend. Anytime you can win all three. You set a record yesterday. Most home runs ever hit at Haymarket yeah. Park. How about that? Yeah, I. You know, we kind of in the middle of it. It's funny uh, when we got back to the coaches' locker room. We're talking, and it's like, hey, that was a lot of fun. And you know, Marcuso and Harvell both said, I couldn't imagine being part of a 50-run game and thinking that you know how how that could even transpire. Um, because I think we had nine home runs in that you 50 did. in that 50 run game, and but that was over here. Yeah, at the old ballpark. So, yeah, seven home runs, uh, you know, record in that ballpark. And there's been plenty of windy days just like that at times too, where um, you know you haven't haven't had that many home runs there. So yeah, great job by our offense. Somebody asked me today. They said of the seven, how many of them were kind of wind blowing? I said maybe one. I thought Charlie's got a little help. <laughs> yeah, but the rest of them I thought were pretty good swings. Yeah, no, it, they were they were good swings. I mean, again, you just you got to get the barrel to it. And, yeah. Um, you know, they it's funny they hit a couple balls that off the bat you're thinking oh that's getting out of the park. But they weren't hit quite high enough. I think you had to get it above the stadium to really get the win uh, behind it. And yeah, like I said, just for those right-handed hitters too to be able to you know stay on the ball that way and, and hit those balls that way, uh, really impressive. Everybody's going to talk about the offense for the weekend, and it was impressive. But I want I want to really kind of dive in on pitching because we go into the weekend knowing you don't have Jace, and that's right. a, that was a concern. But how about the job you, and the the effort you got out of Brockett on Saturday, and then Will Walsh on Sunday? Boy, you couldn't have asked for much more. I mean, the two left-handers go scoreless for what was it, 11, 11 innings between the two of them. Um, and that's coming off the heels of, of Emmett, you know, not having his best start, you know, on Friday and having to go to the pin early. So it's good to see Brockett do that too because he, you know, he battled command a little bit, I thought, early in that game, had three walks maybe in the first two innings, but was competitive, made pitches, and, and, and got out of some jams and just kind of allowed the offense to go to work. And... Um, yeah, same thing with Walsh. I mean, he was um, a couple of innings there where he, you know, we made some plays to get off the field for him, and he made some pitches to get off the field. Back to Brockett, how tough can that be for a pitcher? Because you put the nine spot on the board. How tough can it be then to, one, stay locked in, and two, go, okay, I don't need to be as picky. I can <clears throat> throw the ball maybe more or let him hit the ball around. Sometimes that can mess guys up to go, okay, they try to be too careful about it yeah I think it just you, you can't really change your mindset no. all that much honestly yeah. I mean he you gotta those long innings too and there's a ton of runs scored you've got to pick your spots to go play catch you know if there's a mound visit or you know usually with a nine run inning you're gonna have a, a pitching change in there um, so yeah you just got to make sure you stay loose you, you get stretched out or you go play some more catch 
Um, in that case, I believe he went down to the bullpen and, and got some extra throws just to make sure he was he was going to be ready. And you know, obviously, you can be you don't necessarily have to be too fine when you've got a nine run lead, but but you also can't just throw the ball right down the middle True. either to Division One hitters. So a little bit of a fine line there. I think it allowed him to just kind of settle in, relax. Um, and once we were able to play from ahead that way, um, we were able to extend the lead too. How big of, of an impact has he had and will continue to have in your eyes for Corbin Hawkins? Yeah, Corbin's been a major development for us um, and something that we, we were not surprised about, you know, going into the season. I think we were really counting on him to be a guy. I mean, we even talked about him being a potential closer for this team, you know, depending on, you know, what inning Shannon came in the game and, and kind of not knowing exactly how healthy Perry and Buns were really going to be um, in that bullpen. So not surprised about his success because he's, he's a different look for hitters. He, he throws the slider for a strike from that angle, which is tough. Um, and he can throw the fastball to both sides of the plate. A lot of times those sidearm guys just kind of throw the ball at the plate and just let the sink work, but he can actually locate, you know, to the corners and um, the slider just looks the same coming, you know, all the way, all the way until it's about halfway to the plate. So, um, you know, he got off to a little bit of a rocky start and then we were, we were without him for, I think, two weekends with, he had some, uh, some stiffness in his shoulder. And since he's come back, he's been, he's been excellent. Dude, we didn't see Shea this weekend. Is that a good thing or not? It's a great thing. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Um, just, I think he's got 14 appearances already or, um, you know, so he's, he's thrown in a lot of games and, and, uh, it was a little bit reminiscent of the COVID year in 21 when we won the conference championship, Northwestern came to town, Schwelly was kind of hanging and not that Shea is hanging, Shea feels great. I mean, he's got kind of what you call a rubber arm and he wants to throw every day, but Schwelly was hanging, um, our closer in, in 21, and, so, and he didn't, we didn't have to use him. That, that two-game series against Northwestern, that third game was canceled because of, you know, they, they ran out of pitchers. So that really kind of jump-started Schwelly to feel really, really good and be dominant even more down the stretch um, than he had been prior to. So I think it's a great thing with Shea. I mean, he's, he threw 62 pitches last Tuesday. Um, and for him not to have to throw this weekend, he's going to be feeling really good this week. Good. Let's get some uh, text questions for you. Ron wants to know, Coach, how is Michigan ahead of us in the RPI even though we beat them two out of three at their ballpark? Yeah, uh, what, really what it, it takes into account, um, your opponent's winning percentage, and then it goes further, your opponent's opponent's winning percentage. And um, kind of maybe I've talked about this on a uh, maybe a show prior, but – we haven't had a ton of help uh, in our non-conference uh, no. schedule uh, this year with with some of the traditionally really strong teams. Um, San Diego's battling to get a, you know above 500. They were a conference champion the year before and won you know almost 40 games. Um, you know South Alabama has been traditionally really really strong and they've kind of battled to be around 500. Ole Miss you know has struggled had their struggles in SEC play so it's kind of a a little bit of a crapshoot when you go into a season. Um, and obviously, you know, we've dropped a couple of games in there too that, that have hurt us. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's hard to really know when you go into a season, you know, what, what that's going to look like. Um, and certainly, um, you know, the more road wins you, we can rack up here at the back half of the the schedule, the better it's going to be for us. And there are opportunities are out there yeah, still. There, there are opportunities there. And again, for... For us to reach the goals that we want to reach, um, you know, starts with a conference championship. You're going to need to win 17, 18 conference games to yep. do that. You know, so that's traditionally what what it's taken. So, off to a great start. Uh, got a long way to go to finish it off, but I feel like if if we can r rattle off some of these wins like we should to win the league, we'll be in a pretty good spot. The 1890 Initiative helping Husker student athletes navigate name, image, and likeness. To learn more or donate, visit 1890. Nebraska.com. Brandon from Omaha on our text line. Coach, great weekend. Seems like just a week ago we were in the same spot. What was or is the message this week for the kids to make sure they're aware of how important these midweek games are? Yeah, I, you know, I, I just think we, we've seen a little bit of inconsistency there, um, which has been a little disappointing for, considering we have a veteran team. We've got a lot of guys, you know, on this team that have, have been through it. Um, you know, so we just – you don't really say anything different. I mean, I think you just have to stick to, um, 
you know, kind of our mantra has been just, hey, show up and compete as hard as you can on any given day. But I, I think I do think, and I mentioned this in the post game. Um, Really, after last Tuesday, I was, I was pretty pointed with the team about, hey, I just didn't think that our our intensity was in the right spot. Again, doesn't mean we weren't trying. It doesn't mean that we weren't didn't play hard. It doesn't mean that we didn't want to win. But it, there's just kind of a little bit of a difference there. Um, we had seen it two days prior at Michigan, played a great game. Intensity was there for nine innings. Um, and then we saw it this weekend. So I, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, – just the entire team and in the dugout as well, just making it a priority to be very, very competitive together. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's not easy for, you know, you get you go on the long road trip to Michigan, you come back, you play on Tuesday, you might need a little pick me up and you're going to need it from your teammates, you know. So I think that's just part of it is just making sure that the guys in the dugout are doing their part to, to compete as well. And the energy stays up if that's the case and the, the vibes stay positive if that's the case. Um, so I just I think we kind of saw that after Tuesday. Um, we were very, very intentional in the dugout, I would say, all weekend. And we need to make sure we're there again tomorrow. I mentioned Charlie Fisher earlier about maybe the wind helping him a little bit, but it looked like he he kind of regained his swing a little bit. What did you see from him at the plate? Yeah, you know he's worked. He's gone a little bit back and forth on some mechanical adjustments, and and uh, you know we've we've tried a couple of different things with him. He was standing a little bit taller early in the season and had some success, and then kind of widened his stance out a little bit and gravitated towards a, a different setup and wasn't as successful. Then tried to stand up again. That didn't really work. Um, so I think he's kind of back to a little bit of a happy medium with his mechanics, first of all. Um, I still think there's more there in terms of just his, his approach at the plate. Um, I, I tell you what, though, Charlie's been pretty clutch for us. Like, he, he's, he's one of our best with runners in scoring position. Um, and, yeah, he had some huge swings this week, uh, the bases clearing triple. I think he hit his first, first career triple. Fifth year in college, first Didn't career triple. Miss, huh? no, I don't believe so. And then the next day hit another triple. Yeah. So it's just, uh, yeah, good to see Charlie get back in there with the right-handed starters that we faced and, uh, you know, help and contribute. And you got a day off for Josh Karen in the middle part of the series and let Ben Columbus catch. I know you're always worried about it. Are we putting too much on yeah. catchers? Griff, the same thing last year when he caught all those games. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to kind of pick your spots as well. And, and it just so happened to be a good day to do it, I felt like. I mean, he caught the Tuesday game, caught yep. Friday. So he, you know, he caught all, all three games last weekend. So I thought it was a good day to do that. Um, the, the split said that as well, the, the right-hander that we were facing on Saturday. Lefties hit him a lot better. So we want to get that extra left-handed hitter in there. Uh, felt like that was going to be the best time to do it. And Ben... It's kind of funny. I mean, he's a catcher by trade, and his, his numbers are significantly better offensively when he catches versus when he plays in another position. Hmm. So, um, and that was that was the case. He ended up kind of sparking us with a hit and run double um, that he got. So, um, thought it worked out well for the team. Thought Ben caught really well, um, and then Josh came back and had a couple RBI on Sunday. How's Ben doing at first base? Well, what do you see from him defensively over there? I don't even think about it with him, honestly. I and mean, he's done it some in junior college and, and in high school. And he had told me that. I remember sitting with him uh, on his visit, kind of having conversations about, hey, have you played other positions? You know, we're, we're looking for some left-handed hitters. Um, and he's like, yeah, I've played first base. I've played third base before. We've put him at second base in scrimmages just when we've been down some guys. I mean, he's just a baseball player. Like, he can, he's got good hands, a good arm. Um, he's got pretty good feel uh, to play the game. And he's, he's done a nice job over there at first base. Dorothy Lynch, home style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. It is our baseball show here on a Monday night with a coach for the entire hour. If you want to be a part of this one, 402 402- 413-2400. Call or fire off a text. we got a lot more with the coach coming up. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. 
The Nebraska Lottery has given over $900 million back to our state since 1993. It's gone to improve our environment, education, and stay fair. Over $900 million? That's something. I'll say. Hey, I have a great idea for a commercial. Have someone count to $900 million out loud. That would take 28 years. Mm, not a good idea. I don't know, with a little background music and some sound effects. There's another studio down the hall. Why don't you get started? The Nebraska Lottery. 30 years of building a better Nebraska. Swings at this pitch and launches it to left, and that ball is gone. Grand slam, home run, Bryce Matthews. Breezy day in Manhattan. Hey, Husker fans, tune in tomorrow with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as Nebraska baseball takes on Creighton in a midweek matchup. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 p.m. on the Huskers radio network. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cynics your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cynics station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cynics. Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores, where right now, kids can eat free. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan, townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone. So it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that, which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See shelter agent Jeb Brandt in Hastings or Kelly Shilke in Imperial today. 
From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. As worldwide leaders in ag technology, UNL faculty and students innovate using emerging technologies to improve yields and nutrition and designing wireless infield networks increasing precision in agriculture. Plus, UNL is breaking ground on a $7.2 million feedlot innovation center near Mead. UNL is doing big things for the future of agriculture. Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Blair is your trusted Jeep partner, where you can shop for the entire lineup of Jeep SUVs like the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Lease a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for $449 per month during the Jeep Celebration event going on now. Serving the Metro since 1991. This is Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Blair. With approved credit tax title license extra lease for $449 per month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year, $19.99. First payment at $299 dock fee to its sign. Offer expires 430-2023. See Peter for details. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It is our baseball show. Head coach Will Bolt with us. Huskers coming off of a weekend sweep over Northwestern. It puts the Huskers by percentage points in first place in the league just ahead of Indiana. Let's head to the phones. Let's uh, talk first with Randy. Good evening, Randy. You're up with Coach Bolt. Good evening, Coach Bolt. Hey, Randy. Uh, question, uh, Mason or Nallis, we've seen him early in the season, and he is semi-effective. Uh, he hasn't pitched lately. Is that just situation, or is he injured? No, he's not injured. No, he, he's doing fine. Um, yeah, he's another guy I'd like to like to kind of get going a little bit because he does have some experience. He threw a lot for us last year, and um, you know when when we don't necessarily when you guys as fans don't necessarily see them pitch doesn't mean they haven't been pitching. We we always throw live um, and have live scrimmages on Wednesdays, um, you know, and, and so a lot of these guys that don't get in the games we we see them on Wednesday and. Um, so we're making decisions based on that as well. A lot of times, when it comes down to, you know, who's who's performed well in those type of situations, and and uh, Mason's an awesome kid, great teammate, um, and you know he's got some things that that could potentially help us. So I'd like to see him, um, you know, be a guy that's consistent throwing strikes and, um, you know, working from ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and also, the wind was the wind was just unreal yesterday that is the <laughs> shortest double i've ever seen hit in that in the in the a market yeah oh i mean yeah the wind was i mean we, we've had some windy days here in, in nebraska but that, that was as as crazy as i've ever i mean gust over 40 miles an hour so yeah i think maybe the one you're referring to was maybe was it max's ball that he hit in the infield or Doubled, maybe, yeah. yeah landed between third yeah. and short yeah. hit it about 45 feet so Hey, Randy, appreciate the phone call. Let's head to Omaha next. And Mike, good evening. Mike, you're up with Coach Bull. Hey, Coach, uh, I got to tell you, you are, you are a man of your word. You told me a couple years ago before you came back that you're a believer in the tennis footwork for infielders, and you've been doing it. I thought two years ago that infield was and the outfield was sensational. Was that one of the best defensive teams Nebraska ever had, do you think, a couple years ago? Yeah, we had some. We had two elite defenders in the middle there with with Spencer Schwellenbach at shortstop and uh, Jackson Hallmark in center field. I mean, those guys were, and they took so much pride in their defense as well. That's part of what made them, um, you know, really really strong. And um, you know, to be a good defensive team, you got to be strong up the middle. So, and then you had a young Bryce Matthews playing second base, who was uh, obviously we see what he's turned out to be. Um, so yeah, that was a really really good defensive team, and I think. Uh, I think this year we've we've had a, a pretty consistently um, good defense as well, and um, yeah, I, I I you know I know we used to have these conversations about the about the tennis jump, and and um, I, I definitely came came over to that side of it. I used to leave it up to the guys to kind of decide, and we said, you know what, this is going to be the best way to make sure you get the best first step, and so uh, we harp on that pretty pretty consistently with our guys. And it's paying off, and don't you think it helps the pitchers when they know, hey. If I just keep it in the ballpark, my guys can go get it. Heck yeah! I mean, they know that their their defenders are going to be ready. Um, and you know, if you're not if you're not uh, you know getting that pre pitch movement going, then uh, you're probably not going to be as ready as you should be. So I think it definitely gives the pitchers confidence. I got one question. I've noticed some of your infielders doing this. 
And I think it's connected to knowing what pitch is coming, but not only are they doing the hop, but a lot of them are doing kind of a slide shuffle hop as if they know it's probably going to go maybe to their right, but they're still ready to get it like in tennis if it goes to your left. Is, is that true? Yeah, you're right on. You're right on. You're pretty observant there, Mike. Um, yeah, they, they – because they have – I mean, not, they've always been able to know the pitch because they can look between the catcher's legs, but now they have the wristband, so they have – that information right there. We also go over the scouting report and, and you know, kind of th- they can read the swings as well. That's something that, that Bryce does a fantastic job with. I think he he really learned a lot from Spencer that first year, and, and he's really um, kind of taken over there. So you see a guy in his type of swing, you got the breaking ball coming. There's really only one place for him to hit it. That's usually to to the to your pull side. So uh, that you'll see those guys. Max will move late at times as well. But you also have to make sure you move late enough to where you don't tip off the hitter. Um, that you know he, that what pitch might be coming. So there's a little bit of a of a fine art to it. Um, yeah, and that, that's definitely something that they're um, they're put, putting into place in the games. Mike, appreciate the phone call, Dennis, on our text line, Coach. Now that we have the pitch clock, do you think? college baseball will go to the bigger bases like the major leagues have done and also how do you decide when to do a call for hit and runs you know i hadn't put much thought into the bigger bases um i i don't i think you might see it i think it may it's probably going to come down to cost again you may not think it's you know cost that much. i couldn't even tell you how much a base costs but um you know that is something that some you know some things you have to take into account with with getting, um, you know, new equipment for your field. But I, I, yeah, I think you might see it. You know, usually it's kind of a trickle down with uh, what the big leagues does that we usually end up doing it in college as well. So uh, I suppose that could happen um, when it comes to the bases. And as far as the hit and runs go, uh, you kind of pick your spots as far as the count. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at a, a count where you feel like it's pretty favorable to get a fastball. Uh, it's going to depend on the hitter as well. Is he a high contact hitter? Um, also is the guy that hits a lot of ground balls so uh, if you don't put a runner in motion are you putting yourself at risk to to, you know hit into a double play Um, and then also what type of pitcher you have on the mound is it a guy that's got you know is gives up a lot of ground balls a guy that throws a lot of strikes if you've got a guy on the mound that doesn't throw a lot of strikes then hit and runs are tough because you just never know where the pitch is going to end up so um we haven't done it quite as much this year but i feel like we've been pretty successful with it like i said columbus's ball that he smoked in the gap uh, and right center was uh, for a double was a hit and run, and actually Bryce's home run yeah. uh, at Michigan was a home run, and uh, you know not your typical uh, hit and run swings maybe, but those guys were uh, you know they were ready to hit and they they found barrels and um, yeah it's just kind of a way to 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 stay out of the double play really more than anything, and if it works out perfect. Uh, I guess I suppose if it works out perfect, it's a two-run homer like Bryce did. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's secondary to that would be to go first to third from from first base. First Interstate Bank built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Member FDIC. Back to the phones. Husker Dan up in West Point joins us. Hello, Dan. Hey, gentlemen. How are you tonight? Great, Dan. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Hey, I got. I, j- I just want to congratulate you, Coach Bolt, Thank you. on being number one in Big Ten. I hope we can hold that. And I got a question and a comment. Okay. Okay, my question is, okay, Beans, this being said that, you know, you, you jumped into that spot, do the players act differently? And I know they know what's going on, but is their body language different or is it just another day in, in the office? I would hope not. I, I would hope not that, that you know, anything's going to change. I mean, you have to uh, – you certainly um, – we have goals, and, and we have goals going into the season, and one of those goals is to win a Big Ten championship. So those expectations are there. Um, and, you know, is there a little bit of added pressure potentially? If you look at it that way, I just look at it as, uh, you know, it's, the, it's a privilege to be in a place like Nebraska where you have those expectations and you have um, – you know, a lot of the things in place that we have that will allow us to, to compete for championships. So um, the guys know what they sign up for coming here. Um, and um, a lot of these guys on this roster have, have been part of championship teams. Um, and, and so, 
You know, I, I certainly would hope that we're not going to, you know, we know we've got a long way to go here with this conference season. I think it's, it's a good feeling to know that we've taken care of business these first three weeks um, and that we're in a good spot and that we really control our own destiny. You know, as long as we keep winning series um, and, and getting a couple sweeps along the way, you know, we can stay in first place. So um, I think guys are, they know where we're at um, and they know that, that we got a long way to go to, to reach our goals. And my comment is with that crazy darn win Sunday, I told my wife, this is going to be a home run parade. <laughs> and it was so much fun listening to Greg on that radio. Oh, my goodness. That's most exciting, excited I've ever heard him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I got. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, it was nuts. I, I mean, it, I, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I felt like I had uh, – there was a lot of dirt in every – ear you know my yeah. ears my eyes my head you know, at the end of the day and I know it made it very very difficult for the the fielders to catch those pop-ups and fly balls and and stick with it aren't in Los Angeles says coach I saw saw the, the series with San Diego back in February my question what player on this team you think has improved the most since that those first games in San Diego <sighs> well I mean I think you'd have to say um you know, Bryce Matthews didn't get off to the best start that, that first weekend. And, um, you know, he was our leadoff hitter, and then he hit it in the nine hole a little bit um, and, and got off to a little bit of a slow start. And look at him now. I mean, he's, he's putting together one of the better um, offensive seasons in recent memory, him and Max both. I mean, oh. Max, you know, and again, Bryce has been a little inconsistent over the course of his career. Max has been pretty consistent as far as, as hitting goes. Um, I just been yeah it's been amazing to see kind of Bryce do what he's done and and um, you know really just once he could see him the 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 switch kind of flip on for him um, sometime probably in that second weekend it just hasn't gone back off so um, I would say he's he's in a great spot um, and you know there's some others as well I mean like we talked about Hawkins on the mound I mean he's He's come a long way for us, and, and there's been some other guys as well. Shea Shanneman, I mean, he didn't get off to the greatest start, you know, this season as either, and uh, he stuck with it just like a veteran would. And, you know, you're also seeing some guys get healthy, Jake Buns, you know, um, and Kyle Perry. Those guys are totally different pitchers now uh, than they were that first weekend. 402-413-2400, that's the number to call us up with a Comment or question or fire off a text. It's time now for our Husker Baseball Trivia Contest brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. Your chance to receive $100 in scratch tickets from the lottery. Limit one winner per household for the season. So if you've already won on one of our shows, you are ineligible for the rest of the year. Text us your guess on our text line again, 402-413-2400. Which Regular, everyday player in the infield for the Huskers is yet to commit an error. This will be the broadcaster jinx. Which Husker plays in the infield is yet to commit an error in 2023? First one with the right answer will make you a winner. 402-413-2400. More of the show coming up. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. UNL is the only Big Ten university in Nebraska, part of the only conference with an academic alliance. Being in the Big Ten means superior academics, unique student opportunities, better resources, and world-class research programs. With 72% of undergraduate students receiving scholarships or financial aid, UNL offers a Big Ten education at great value. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. 
Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Enjoy a quick and convenient way to purchase your next vehicle when you shop at Woodhouse Hyundai. We have over 90 new vehicles in stock and ready for you to drive home, like the 2023 Hyundai Elantra. This versatile sedan is packed with advanced tech and safety features that will transform the way you travel. And when you shop at Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest extra easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance, America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Visit us online at woodhousehyundaiofomaha.com. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cenex has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared... You spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Our Nebraska Lottery trivia question, which everyday infielder has not committed an error yet in 2023. The an an Max Anderson is the answer. Also, I should say your catcher, Josh Karen, does not have an error as well. But pretty impressive to play in the middle part of the diamond and not have an error this many games into the season. 
Yeah, as I knock on wood profusely here. Right, because <laughs> you and I were bragging about uh, Dylan Carey. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, Max, again, and playing second base for the first time at, at this level. Been, been real impressed with how he's done. So we, we, we do have a winner, so a lot of people got it right, but our first winner, we're, we're getting some information from them. We'll pass the name on here in just a moment. The Nebraska Lottery has raised over $923 million, which has helped to provide more than 150,000 college scholarships, save wildlife habitats across the state, and fund new facilities at the Nebraska State Fair. The Nebraska Lottery helping to build a better Nebraska. Let's head down to Kansas and chat next with Tom. Good evening, Tom. You're up with the coach. Hey, coach. Hey, congratulations uh, this weekend. Way to take care of business like the championship team that I know you guys are. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, and by the way, I, what was the answer to the question? Max Anderson. Josh Karen de doesn't have an heir? He does not. I went, I went with the infielder, so I probably should have included Josh in there as well, but I was thinking Max, so... Well, Greg, I don't know if you know this, but uh, us catchers are I infielders. Know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, everybody else kind of took my thunder on things they said, and you guys already covered most of it. So let's just get right into it. And, Coach Bolt, we had this conversation last year. And you know us baseball players, they're about as superstitious as any group of sports athletes that there are. And whatever is happening – before the Tuesday game, starting on Monday today, I want you guys to change it, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I am so sick of getting on social media and listening to – there's a picture on Extra about a Maverick and a Creighton Blue Jay over the Husker emblem saying that we're the little brothers in Nebraska. And I thought I had to leave work today. I was so mad. <laughs> Yeah, Monday's uh, you know Monday's an off day for us, so um, we, we let the guys kind of have their their day to to get themselves you know mentally and physically ready to to play. We'll lift weights. Uh, we've been lifting weights on Tuesdays, and and um, you know like I said, we've we've kind of honed in some things that we feel like we need to get better at. It's all mental, really. Um, at the end of the day, it's. Um, again, it's not from a lack of want to. It's just more of a, f a focus thing. And, um, you know, that's when, you, when you've got that championship focus, you never lose it. So um, we need to make sure that we're, we're definitely in that spot um, tomorrow. Jeff and Omaha on our text line. By the way, thanks, Tom, for the phone call. Jeff and Omaha on our text line. Coach, talk about some players that are redshirting this season and what, uh, what do you expect for them maybe in 2024? Yeah, we've we've got a, a probably a handful of guys that that are redshirting. Um, you know, what we really uh, go into the season and, and we kind of have an idea of of players that we feel like um, there some are injury related. Right. I mean, we've got we've got several guys that um, had had injuries. Trey Fromm out for the year. Um, he had had Tommy John surgery. Um, you know, he was going to be probably a big part of our bullpen this year. Uh, you know upper 90s fastball and and uh, you know could have potentially really helped out um, in a short stint in the pen um, Hayden Lewis is another uh, that was a two-way guy an outfielder pitcher and uh, you know he got hurt as well those guys will be still be on the mend this summer as well so they won't get a chance to go play um, Zach Johnson is, is one that is on the roster um, that that's redshirting this year um, you know, I feel like he probably could have got in there and, and gotten some at bats, but also feel like he's got a chance to have a bright future here as well. And, and uh, you know, we had a lot of right-handed hitters on our team as, as well, so he was kind of a little bit further down the line. Um, and and so he he's uh, he's one. And Mikey Polly is another um, that came in as a fo football player uh, as well. And um, the guy we're excited about, so, you know, those guys are, um, you know, some of the ones that are sitting out uh, this year. And, and uh, you know, some of them will be able to go play summer ball and, and really improve um, and, and come back in the fall better players than, than they were when they left. Um, and, you know, there's going to be some guys coming back off injury as well. Update us on CJ. How's he coming along? CJ's coming along. Um, you know, he was in the bullpen. Uh, he was going to potentially come in the game in the eighth or ninth inning. Um, feeling good. I mean, he threw, and you know, I spoke earlier in the show about the Wednesday outings. Um, he, he's thrown now twice on Wednesdays. The velo's back. Um, breaking ball looks sharp. Um, 
you know, it's just a matter of kind of picking the right spot to get him in there. Um, so probably would like to see him maybe another uh, – if there's an opportunity rises tomorrow night, then we'll use him. Um, it's got to be the right opportunity, though. He hasn't pitched. It's been quite some time. He didn't really get much time in the summer or the fall because of, you know, some, some stuff that's been bothering him. So got to pick the right spot uh, to potentially get him in there. Uh, if not, still see him maybe another Wednesday, see if he can harness that command a little bit and, uh, you know, be a guy that we can use out of the pen. Could he redshirt still? Um, yeah, I suppose he could. He could redshirt still because he hasn't, he hasn't played this year. He hasn't thrown this year. Um, but I, I, my anticipation is that we would probably use him at some point before the season's over. Okay, yeah, very good. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question. That is our Sports Sunday Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back with our final segment with the coach next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Your story, it lives in River City, where you can enjoy a metropolitan vibe and a small town feel, where we set the standard for service and looking out for one another, where there's so much more than steak in our thriving food scene. Your story is the story of Omaha, told by those who live it and love it. Whether that's helping you keep up with the Cornhuskers or creating the content you crave. And here in the Omaha World Herald is where it comes to life. Omaha World Herald, where your story lives. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free call to 811. You want to borrow my phone, buddy? Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow... Bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. A few more minutes with the coach. Huskers play Creighton at home tomorrow night, off to Iowa this weekend. Hawkeyes, you're going to see some arms from the Hawkeyes. They've got a guy touching 100 that starts for them on Friday. That'll be a big velo guy. Yeah, they've got several guys. Uh, their Saturday guy as well is going to be mid-90s. Um, and so, yeah, Brody Brecht on Friday for for the Hawkeyes. He's kind of become their um, their Friday night starter. They kind of eased him into it. A uh, little bit of a project coming out of high school. 
uh, football player as well, a wide receiver on the football team. So um, big physical guy, yeah. I mean, he, he, he's got a power slider. I've heard a lot of scouts talk about how his slider might be the best pitch in college baseball. Uh, and then that's, that's with Ooh. a guy that's got a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. So, um, yeah, going be, gonna to be a tall order. Um, always very competitive series when – the Huskers and the Hawkeyes uh, lock lock up, and and um, yeah, just it's going to be a very challenging week for us. Want to congratulate Josh in Plainville? He was the first to answer Max Anderson. He's the winner of our lottery tickets tonight. Josh, thanks for listening. Play, appreciate you playing with us here tonight. First thing first, great tomorrow night. Blue Jays coming off of a series against Georgetown. That was a heartbreaker. We played him up in Omaha a month ago. You had the league going to the bottom of the ninth, so here's another one you kind of owe somebody a, a payback game. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of those games where I, I didn't have any issue whatsoever about how we competed. I mean, it wasn't a lack of focus or, um, you know, what we talked about maybe with some of these other games that we've let slip away. I, I thought we played a good baseball game that night and um, just didn't turn out the way we wanted it to turn out. And a little bit of misfortune there. I mean, um, probably could have gone to um, Buns, but we weren't quite sure what we had with him just yet. Um, he's, he's come a long way since then. Uh, Perry had thrown, he gotten up and down three times on that Sunday, being a little careful there with him, and then Shanneman wasn't available uh, on that day. So it made, you know, for a tough ending there um, after such a great performance by Will Walsh. So, uh, like I said, I just I want to see our offense uh, continue to to show up, you know, the way we need to on Tuesdays because, you know, I, early in the season maybe we had some higher scoring games where it got away from us on the mound, but I feel like we've got the offense that can, can go score if we're if we're locked in, uh, you know, one through nine in our lineup. I feel like I'd like to see a, a night where um, we just put it all together, M- much the way that we did against Kansas State a couple of weeks ago on the road. Well, you had some challenges this weekend. I know you don't like to play doubleheaders. It worked out Saturday. You had to back that game up a little bit, but the the field playing surface looked like it survived pretty well after the rain that we had Friday night, Saturday morning. Yeah, you want to try to avoid doubleheaders if you can. Um, and and so, you know, if it's unavoidable, it's unavoidable. But also the thing that would have come into play Sunday is uh, there was a 3.30, uh, you know, no inning was going to start after 3.30. So to p- try to get two nine-inning games crammed in before 3.30 on, on Sunday would have been difficult, especially considering uh, at 10, 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning, it, where we were probably going to have to start, uh, the wind chills were going to be in the, close to that 28-degree real feel range. So, yeah, uh, thought, thought it worked out fine on, on Saturday. We were just a little bit longer a day at the yard for, for our guys, but – uh, they m- made the most of their time, uh, bonded a little bit, I think, in the locker room. And, and um, yeah, Phil Krug did a nice job. Got the, got the pitchers got the tarp pulled, and, and uh, they got the field ready to go. And, and um, it was business as usual. With more daylight at the end of the day, it didn't seem like you were there that late. I mean, yeah. you were done, I think, by 6.15 or so. It wasn't bad. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It, and it uh, feels a whole lot better when you have a nine-run inning as well. Yeah, <laughs> sure does. And, you know, it, it took the life out of the game. It really kind of yeah. did. And I know you probably wish you'd have scored more runs, but yeah. you could just kind of sense Northwestern's like, this one's over. Your guys probably felt like, yeah, they're not coming back from nine. And, <laughs> and, and then Brock had gotten that rocking chair and kind of just put it away for you. Yeah, it definitely allowed him to settle in. And, and um, we maybe left a few runs out there. But then we, we show up the next day and score in the first eight innings right right away. So baseball is a crazy game that way, isn't it? Sure is. All right, good luck tomorrow. All right, appreciate it. Huskers and Blue Jays tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at Haymarket Park. Our pregame will begin at 6. Our Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. And folks, time to tell you to buckle up, put the phone down, a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Oscars and Jays tomorrow night. We're on the air again at 6. Thanks to Cole for running the show tonight. We'll talk to you tomorrow night from Haymarket Park. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? 
When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Swings at this pitch and launches it to left, and that ball is gone. Grand slam, home run, Bryce Matthews. Breezy day in Manhattan. Hey, Oscar fans, tune in tomorrow with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as Nebraska baseball takes on Creighton in a midweek matchup. Pre-game coverage begins at 6 p.m. on the Huskers radio network. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. When you're a fan, you wear your team's jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. After a win, your world glistens. Lose, and the hurt permeates your soul. You'll always have a place with us in the Cox Fan Zone, where everyone can play and connect with other fans in a big group hug. See, in the Fan Zone, you're not some crazy fan. You're home. Hey, Husker fans, this is Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers. Say Fan Zone into your Cox.